Hi everyone, here's the Bookchemist once again. Today I'm reviewing The Seventh Function of Language by Laurent Binet, a book that's based on a very simple but very alluring assumption. The idea that Roland Barthes' death in 1980 wasn't an accident, but was actually an assassination, part of a broader plot that involves the entire school of critical thinkers from the 70s and 80s, and the French school of critical thinkers in particular, and that touches and involves philosophers and literary and language theorists from all over the world. This is a book where Michel Foucault gets a blowjob in a Parisian sauna, where somebody pees on Umberto Eco, and when John Searle unleashes rabbit dogs on Derrida. I usually never talk about the plots of the books I discuss on my channel. The reason why I did it right now is because I believe it's quite important that you know what you're getting into if you're interested in reading The Seventh Function of Language, and I'll explain why later into the review. As has probably become clear by now, The Seventh Function of Language is a novel that fictionalizes an entire cast of real-life figures, everybody who was anyone in critical thinking, literary theory, uh, linguistics, semiotics, has a spot in the novel. Jacobson, Althusser, Todorov, uh, Foucault. And the book definitely has lots to say about the specific branches of science, philosophy, call it what you will, in which these scholars specialized. Semiotics, early in the novel, the study of science, is described as one of the great discoveries in human evolution. And there is a lot in here about a conception of semiotics that equates it almost to detective work, something you already find obviously in uh, Umberto Eco's The Name of the Rose, where the, the investigations of the, the, the monks at the heart of the book, and in particular of the... Are they monks? Are they friars? I suspect they're friars. In particular of Guglielmo de Baskerville, this Sherlock Holmes figure, it's really... this detective work is really reduced to a capacity to observe and interpret the implications and the inner, th the inner truths in everything you observe around you, just in the same way as people like Roland Barthes on the cover of the book, or Umberto Eco themselves, taught people how to look at a new at everything surrounding them from James Bond movies to comic books to advertisement and to interpret the messages that are hidden behind these apparently obvious texts. But at the same time as the novel shows a rather admiring stance towards semiotics and towards some of the theories espoused uh, and explained in the novel, it also it shows some rather scathing humor in the way it characterizes these people, Foucault, Sawyers, uh, Althusser, Kristeva, and so on and so forth. They are portrayed, generally speaking, as scheming, self-obsessed, egotistical, uh, vain. Seventh function of language definitely is not in O of these figures it talks about. And although it does take a few shots against some of these philosophers and scholars on a personal level, I believe that Binet is not really interested in character assassination as much as he is interested in making fun of their theories. I think the novel strives to show how behind the complex intellectualism and the complicated, opaque, um, obtruse theories of these scholars maybe there isn't that much content after all. It's a suspicion I've always had, I must confess, when studying people like Derrida or Foucault. Very often I've, uh, I, I found myself reading pages upon pages of their scholarship without really understanding the first thing about what the fuck they were even trying to say. In the blurb from the Herald on the inside back cover of my edition of the book, the reviewer says that in the novel Binet kills literary theory in all its fake and useful stupidity, which is probably taking it a step too far, especially because literary theory per se is not really the subject of the novel linguistics theory uh, is. Um, but I do believe that although I wouldn't go as far as to say that, I do uh, agree that the text is interested 
in showing some of the fakery and needless complexity, hiding the lack of substance in some of these scholars' theories. Interestingly, on that front, I believe that the most obscure and ineffable of critical thinkers are portrayed as the biggest assholes in the book. Foucault, in particular, does not really come off as a very nice character, whereas scholars like Eko or Todorov or even Barth himself, people who, sure, they write difficult books, but whose ideas, whose points, at the end of the day, if you sit down with their writing and focus, you're usually able to understand, these people come off as more positive and upstanding characters. I've talked a lot about the subject of the book, but what is the book itself like? It's a bit of a mess, I must confess. It really surprised me. At times, it reads like a straightforward, neat thriller and very engaging at that too. At times, it becomes a Pinchonian mess where 20 characters share the scene and it's difficult to follow each one as they move along and it's difficult to understand how important each development and revelation is going to be to the broader plot. That, by the way, is the reason why I mentioned the plot of the novel at the beginning of the video. If you're not going to appreciate the extensive name dropping that happens all across the, 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 the novel, if you don't really care that Todorov makes an appearance, that um, John Searle is a, is a central character, that Althusser plays a role in the book, if you don't care about these people, I suspect you're not going to have an awesome time with the seven functional language. This is clearly a book for somebody who had to study, to their excitement, to their dismay, had to study critical thinking, linguistic theory in college at some point in their life, and is going to get a kick out of reading a thriller novel where all of those bizarre, difficult scholars basically try to kill one another. That doesn't mean that the intertextual thrill of, oh, I know who that person is, or the shock value of reading about Foucault's blowjob are the only joys that you're going to get from the book, far from it. The friendship between the two protagonists, Simon Herzog, uh, this young semiotician from some Parisian college, and Bayard, the uh, detective who's investigating Barth's death, their relationship, they're very different characters, each of them is awful in some ways, but is also... they're good people at the very end of the day. Uh, th their relationship is actually quite uh, fun and entertaining to read about, and they have a very uh, nice back and forth, and it's beautiful to read the way they grow in the course of the novel. Uh, uh, Herzog grows from being a relatively bratty young man to becoming something else, whereas Bayard, as many of us did when we had to study critical thinking and linguistic theory and all that, starts by hating its guts and by thinking that it's all useless junk that has no relevance on his life and it's not going to help him at all, to actually becoming quite interested in what linguistics, semiotics, can tell us about the world we live in, about the way we relate to this world, about the way we interpret all the impulses we're subjected to, about everything, really. The last thing I'll mention is that you don't only need a certain understanding of the importance of French critical thinkers in order to appreciate the book, you probably also need a smattering of French politics of the 70s and 80s, and Italian politics of the 70s and 80s. It's well worth revising your European socialism history <laughs> before you tackle the book in order to appreciate it fully. I myself had to pause the reading a couple of times to investigate a few of these French political figures I wasn't very familiar with. I know that if the premises sound interesting you should read the book is an awful point to make in a review, but it is especially valid for the seventh function of language. If the idea of a book where Roland Barthes and Umberto Eco play central roles as character thrills you, and I suspect that if you are a linguistic theory, literary criticism sort of nerd, it, it, you're, you, you probably find the idea quite enthralling, then I think you can have a lot of fun with Seventh Function of Language. It's a strange book once more. I'm not quite sure if it's it was trying to be written in the, in the vein of Umberto Eco's novels, in the vein of Thomas Pynchon's paranoid operas, if it was meant to be a straight-up thriller novel. It's it, end up look it ends up looking like a weird mix of all three. At times it reads like Foucault's Pendulum's lighter cousin, which is no backhanded compliment. Foucault's Pendulum, in my opinion, is one of 
the great novels of the 20th century and any work that can compare to it, it's worth a read. And I think Seventh Function of Language definitely is. I look forward to discussing it with readers. Did you find it offensive in the way it approached these uh, uh, important thinkers and scholars? Did you enjoy the book? Did you struggle with understanding all the references? I definitely didn't know a few of the famous people that were, that were name dropped. I look forward to discussing it in the comment section below. Thank you as always for watching the review and bye guys.